Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You know, when you get born again, you are introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. And among the many things that the Holy Spirit does is to guide you into all truth. Are we together now? And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says he will guide you. He will guide you. He will reveal to you the precepts, the ways of God. So every time we tabernacle week after week, this is not just a convergence of Christians honoring a spiritual activity. It's more than that. Every opportunity that we have to be exposed to his power, his grace, our hearts must be intentional because it is the entrance of his word that gives light. And then the Bible declares that it gives understanding unto the symbol. Your stamina and your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon spiritual illumination light Isaiah 33 says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time you have to know the ways of God the ways of God define the modus operandi of the kingdom God has a method God has how he lifts God has how he restores God has how he blesses. God has how he keeps the saints in victory. He says, now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph. And so our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to expose the body of Christ and those who have been given and are planted under our spiritual um, jurisdiction to provide the requisite level of spiritual intelligence, the requisite level of knowledge that number one, helps you to know the Lord and then number two, equips you with the keys it takes to walk in victory experientially. Are we together? That means that after a while of exposing yourself to the truth of God's word, you must come to a point where you are strengthened, you are equipped. Equipped. Ephesians chapter 4, when you read from verse 9 down to 11, the Bible says, It's for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping. Some versions say equipping, others say maturing, perfecting of the saints. We have all kinds of professionals in our midst. We have doctors, we have business people, we have politicians and, and so on and so forth. You are not equipped by just giving every and any tool. You are equipped by giving the tools that you will need to excel. Imagine with me, for instance, that a farmer goes to the farm and the equipment that you give him is a syringe, is an injection. Are we together now? A bandage those are useful equipment but not for farming so the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly then it says in all wisdom the word of Christ can dwell in you richly but not in wisdom the wisdom part is that you are equipped methodically you are equipped in a way and manner that supplies the spiritual arsenals um, such that you not only have these truths, but you know how to use them if and when occasions demand. Are we together? The end of knowledge is to be able to solve problems, to provide solutions with the information that you have. Any information that is not able to solve your problem is almost useless. Are we together? So this is not an advocacy just to communicate random truth. Mm -mm. There is an intentional project to equip you with the requisite body of knowledge. Listen carefully. Please listen carefully. When it has to do with the knowledge of God, 
exploring the person of God, it will take eternity. We will never exhaust him. Even in heaven, there is room to come up hither. We will continue to know him as his glory unfolds. But as far as our excelling in this kingdom is concerned, please listen, there is a finite body of spiritual information that we need. You can handle the truth that makes for your victory here and now. The narrative that the truths we need to excel in life are so many and infinite is not an accurate narrative. You can understand the principles that make for speed, for restoration, for favor, for increase. Just like a student continues to learn even after graduation, but there is an exact body of truth that is responsible for awarding him a degree in a field and he can exhaust it and hold a degree as a testament that I have faithfully exhausted this body of light. So our advocacy is to bring us to a point of accuracy spiritually that you know what keys are responsible for what outcomes. This is the whole idea of victory. You know, I said it at the first service, the inaugural service, that many believers have truth. It's like a house. How many of you know that a house has many rooms? And not all keys open every door. Is that true? Yeah. If you are in that house and the only door that is opened is the door to your living room. If what you need to do is just to relax, that's fine. But if you need to use the restroom and you do not have the key that opens the restroom, you are in trouble. If you need to go to the kitchen and you do not have the key that opens the kitchen, you are in the house, but you will still be frustrated. So the Bible says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. These keys control favor, they control speed, they control your prayer life. Week after week, God begins to hand these keys to us. So after a while of immersing yourself in this truth, you stand surrounded by mysteries like chariots and you can take on life with confidence. You are not shadow boxing, you are not hoping. Listen. The laws of the kingdom are so powerful. They are protected by God's own jealousy. Are we together? The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall the preacher go except he be sent? Except he be sent. So please do not take lightly and do not take casual every opportunity you have to learn the ways of God. God is taking away from our lives the religiosity around information that cannot produce results. I know something about prayer. I know something about fasting. I know something about night vigil. I know something about communion. I know something about the name of Jesus. And we have little, little... Um, dimensions of scattered spiritual truth that are not synergized to produce victory in our lives so our christian experience becomes one that is full of fear because we do not know the the, the arsenals that were designed to command what level of victory there is a random pursuit listen the faith life can be an interesting adventure when you are equipped with knowledge you are no longer ignorant you know you know what it takes to bring favor. You know what it takes to open closed doors. The goal is never for a man of God to stand and become king of kings and lord of lords over your life. Uh -uh. The goal is that by the election of grace, you are immersed under this atmosphere of knowledge and that you are equipped to the point where you now become a savior yourself on the strength of the truth that you know and you have result after result it now begins to strengthen your confidence you get to a point where you are no longer doubting you are not hoping does this work does this not work you know he said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded hallelujah are you blessed the saints are built in this kingdom through the communication of the word more specifically the exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course content the course curriculum that builds the believer to a point of stature and maturity in the spirit so more than the miracles and the manifestations 
in as much as those things are very important but we must submit ourselves to the methodical approach of spiritual growth where we not only know the Lord but we understand his ways they are called the mysteries of the kingdom Jesus said I am the way I'm not only a person I am God's authorized method you can study Jesus the way as the pathway to victory please run away from that Christian narrative that continues to endorse and justify failure in your life provided you are knowing the Lord it downplays the place of excelling in life and makes it look like there is no need you believe that narrative no matter how well intentioned you will use your lifetime paying the price for it I am come he said John chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then he says I am come that he may have life that is a level then he says and then to have it more abundantly so there is life and there is abundant life life the peace that you have with God based on the impartation of eternal life more abundant life is eternal life in your spirit alongside a victorious life on earth that is abundant life I made up my mind years ago that I will never lead a people who excel in their spirit work prayer fellowship with God and then become failures in life and their lives become a reproach to the victory that was won when Jesus said it is finished he did not only mean the sin problem was finished he also meant dominion had been restored are we together now you have to believe the whole counsel of God many times some of these erroneous doctrines come out of a combination of pride and frustration pride because we do not open ourselves to learn more frustration because we exhaust the body of knowledge we know and so we are not able to command other levels of results in frustration we now build a theology around our failure to explain away the possibility of complete victory a believer can have complete victory you can love the Lord and grow in passion while your finances also grow while your influence grows while you enjoy longevity and have peace with your children this is abundant life are we together if it is true that the gospel and the kingdom life was designed to be useful to everyone then it means it must capture within itself the ability to solve every problem we find on earth I believe in the whole counsel of God and by the grace of God I will not fail to bring to us spiritual truth after spiritual truth my assignment is to labor with the spirit and in partnership with other vessels across the body of Christ to sieve and piece together the working knowledge of the word the spiritual principles that are assigned first for our knowledge of God in experience and then for our excelling in life and to serve it so passionately and diligently to whoever is interested that if and when you embrace these truths and you believe them and apply them you know many times we say one word from the Lord can change your life that's not exactly true one word from the Lord that is accurately taught understood and engaged with understanding that is the word that produces you read your Bible the Bible says that the sower came and sowed the word Satan himself came and uprooted the seed Satan is not afraid of the word he is afraid of the union of the word with the believer who understands it remember that his assignment his office in heaven was the light bearer he was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he's not afraid of the word what satan is afraid of is your understanding the word and your engaging it because the power of god is released at the instance of your understanding and applying not just receiving are we together praise the name of the lord so let me just use a few minutes to touch on a topic that I believe would help to accelerate our growth 
Psalm 65 verse 2 the mystery of prevailing prayer the mystery of prevailing prayer I want to teach you something about prayer to add to your spiritual arsenals that will command victory after victory in your life the Bible says oh thou that hearest prayer this immediately tells you not everybody can hear prayer oh thou that hearest prayer it says unto thee shall all flesh come this statement is both an acknowledgement and a recommendation the writer is recommending that among the many people who claim to be able to hear and answer prayer through my research i have found out that there is only a single individual who sustains the ability to hear prayer and my recommendation is all flesh if you really need your prayer answered there is one who hears prayer he says unto thee shall all flesh come the subject of prayer is a very interesting one because every religion regardless what they believe they believe in prayer as the medium of communicating with the divine almost every religion believe that there is a reality beyond the three-dimensional realm they have all kinds of propositions that have been strengthened by their experiences but altogether they believe that there is some force or some deity above and beyond the realm of science that can come into partnership with men here and now and produce dimensions of victory that is not given to ordinary men so the subject of prayer is not new across religions across all kinds of faith practices but then the challenge many times has been that believers become frustrated because after dissipating hours and energy in what we know and call to be prayer it looks to me and to many of us in our experience that the amount of energy even physical and emotional energy that is being exerted into this activity we call prayer doesn't seem commensurate to the results that follow are we in agreement so week in week out we have the house of God across this city across this nation filled with professing believers who are praying in some way many adding with fastings but when you compare the level of energy the level of zest and zeal and emotional strain that we go through in that activity we call prayer versus the result that comes from it it doesn't seem to add up and yet the Bible tells us that God is love the Bible tells us God is Abba that he is more willing if he did not spare his son Jesus he's more willing to give us all things are we together Luke chapter 11 the disciples began to study the life and the ministry of Jesus now until Jesus came John the prophet who we call the Baptist had his disciples some of them later became the disciples of jesus theologically speaking and they saw him pray they saw him do a lot of things and um keep worship sessions and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man jesus is teaching now when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through dry regions looking for a place of refuge why is that so there's no time to explain it to you you see God spirit beings have spirit bodies there is something called the law of territory you are only at ease in a territory when you are made up of the same material with that territory are we together now that means if you are in heaven you will never be at peace until you are made with the material of that atmosphere are we together now this disembodied spirit you see when they left their original estate you know what that means because angels and these spirit beings can translate into different states not just like men that were here always human now to perform certain assignments they would have to translate downgrade themselves to certain levels they did that in rebellion and when they tried to return back to their original estate they were hijacked so till today 
all disembodied spirits are in a state of restlessness because they are not in heaven and they are roaming around the earth and in the earth here they are violating a law of territory because they do not have a material body for their spirits to find rest are, are you understanding it now so constantly disembodied spirits are in a straight loitering across the length and the breadth of the earth and the way god created the human body is that there is a possibility of multiple spirits coexisting in the same body it is not only one spirit that can coexist one man had a legion you remember in the bible that's to tell you how scarce accommodation is for these demons that a legion can make do with one body to find rest so don't play games with your body that's to tell you bodies are serious real estate issues in the realm of the spirit oh yes when demons see bodies that are available they don't play games with it no a body has now prepared for me so when these spirits find expression in a body they find some level of rest they can occupy animals like they they entered the swine is that true but the most comfortable body is the human body why because humans are the zenith of god's creation and their level of complexity can allow the demons to find expression the presence of will emotion and intellect can allow them to find expression they may not have that level of liberty with animals so there is a constant search for bodies but here's where i'm going the bible says when a demon leaves a human body it gets back into that state of restlessness are we together it goes around dry regions and not finding a place here's what the demons will say like the prodigal son the demon will say i will arise and go back and go back to my house the demon is still calling the place he left my house that means in his mind there is still a possibility of returning and then the bible says when it comes it will find that body swept it will find that body clean but it finds it empty and the demon is kind enough to invite other demons higher than itself to build fortification to return to that individual so that the latter part of that individual is worse than the beginning herein lies the mystery behind people who get free momentarily and then it looks like their situation multiply because they did not know what to do with the house of God my house shall be called the house of prayer there are six reasons I've written here why all believers must pray there are six reasons I've written here we'll take that for tonight and pray if you do not understand um, do you know do you know please look up do you know the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious Christian they are not really interested in the results subconsciously there seems to if you are a believer and you are living among other believers you know prayer has a way of intimidating you someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your own seriousness you keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal you're not interested in the results The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray. Ready? Number one, the first reason, and those of you who are following from your homes, from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that god commanded that we pray it is a command 
two scriptures Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 popular scripture I use it a lot when teaching especially around the subject of prayer this was a parable now in his earth work Jesus used a lot of parables why because his listeners were not spiritual people they were not regenerated their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer so he had to employ parables to help them explain how the kingdom works and he spake a parable to this end the morale of the parable is that men everybody say men men, men here doesn't just mean the male gender men humans that humans ought always to pray and not to faint so it's a command the whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer the Bible says there was a city verse 2 Luke 18 and verse 2 there was a city in a city a judge may you never meet this kind of judge in your life in Jesus name my apologies to those who are those of us who are judges and magistrates I'm your friend there was in a city a judge look at the description of this kind of man the Bible says which feared not God that means it's difficult for God to speak to him number two he neither regarded man you couldn't bribe him you couldn't come and beg what sort of a man is this so this is scene one and then scene two the Bible says there was a widow a widow is a supposedly a defenseless woman. Her source of security and defense has been taken away from her. He's teaching you the power of prayer. And then the Bible says she came to him, that man. Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 4. The Bible says he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, my God. That means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation. If you pray with time, there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations. It says, though I fear not God. So the man is aware. He's aware of his condition. It's not just that the writer is telling lies. The man is aware. He's testifying here now that even though I do not fear God, nor regard man, verse 5, it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her lest by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the bible mandates that we pray first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 apostle paul is speaking to the church in thessalonica and he says pray without ceasing." the word pray without ceasing" does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without ceasing. number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the Bible says in this case, speaking about praying in an unknown tongue, it says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now, there's no time to contrast this with what the Bible calls diverse kinds of tongues. There are two different experiences. When we come to the series on the Holy Spirit, then we touch the gifts of the Spirit. Then I will teach you this. The Bible um, creates... A dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues 
and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of Christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the Lord will call when you read all through the books of Acts every time the Holy Ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the Holy Spirit they began to speak whether it's Acts chapter 2 whether it's Acts chapter 6 to 8 whether it's Acts chapter 19 the most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter 19 maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that verse 1 the Bible says Paul haven't passed through the upper coast the Bible says that um, he came to Ephesus and then he found certain disciples follow the discourse verse 2 he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost they were disciples so you see there was something about their teacher their teacher was not teaching them something they said in our lecture we've not received this we don't even know that there's anything called the Holy Spirit surprise now he said unto what then were you baptized and they said unto John's baptism now the lecture begins verse 4 he said John's baptism verily verily John baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on Christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus the miracle now and when Paul had laid his hands on them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the Bible tells us their number verse 7 the Bible says and all the men were about 12 but the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with God when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 the Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 Luke chapter 9 the Bible says and it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings he took Peter John and James and went up to the mountain to pray verse 29 
the bible says and as he prayed watch transformation two things happen one the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering there is a dimension of beauty and glory you evolve is like it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray i am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation bring for me a weak believer timid completely ignorant but with the heart that is bent on prayer i show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later let one day become one week become one month become one year become three years become five years and i show you a sign and a wonder was it not paul himself that says i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all are we together i hope god is blessing us say amen, amen. it's very important that we pray growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray now you see for many believers prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer i'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come because when his kingdom comes there are many things you will not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of god's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of god your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for God and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made you are praying you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer I'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that church that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness 
Are we together? Let's hurry up. We have to pray. Jude 1, Jude has only one chapter, verse 20. The Bible again talks about prayer. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer builds up. There are many ways that prayer builds up. It builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. So when you begin to pray, what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated. You can know. Then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit. Where you can know things. Even though your eyes may not see angels, but you can know they are here. And at first, when you start in the school of prayer, it will look like you are lying. But the accuracy and the predictability of your results will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie. You will know, you will perceive danger. Prayer is powerful. It brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms. You are human, yet you are spiritual. You can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real Wickedness is real. The devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us. Meaning if you fold your hands and let him be, he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you. But there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ and through this mystery we call warfare and intercession we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now warfare and intercession is very powerful James chapter 5 and verse 13 Apostle James now is teaching us. James 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, Is any among you afflicted, buffeted? Is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant? Is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children, your life, your career, your business? Don't explain it away using science or sociology. It says the moment you find affliction, the solution is let him pray we do every other thing but prayer we discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation and yet we do not pray is any among you afflicted he says let him pray for time's sake we may not read on but when you read down to 18 it uses elijah it personifies an individual called elijah that he was a man of like passions but he took the tool of prayer and literally stopped rain physically, not a parable, over a territory. Let me tell you this. Elijah was not the only one who believed in the God of the Bible. And I'm sure there were people who said, God, don't mind him. We command rain to come. And yet rain did not come. Because a man had authority to prayer. And God respected his authority. Regardless what you were saying that day, you would keep talking. If Elijah did not speak, rain would not come. May God give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say, this year, you all rise and go to bed. It doesn't matter who is talking after you. He spoke too late. You have declared. Let all the enchantments and all the divination speak. Not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say, what are they saying now? No. Elijah's authority, when he declared it, he said, I know God. He went to bed. There were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah. I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and said, what an arrogant man. God, bring rain to show this man he's not the only one. And God said, no, he doesn't work like that. When you ascend in this spirit and you have authority, you will do wonders with it. 
he prayed for a space of three and a half years there was no rain and then to show you it was not luck he went again and did the same thing and rain came hallelujah warfare and intercession it was on the strength of prayer in acts chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 to 17 the bible says peter was bound hand and feet in chains they were preparing to kill him but the bible says verse 5 that peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing that's paul's encouragement now of the church unto god for him believe me when i tell you prayer is powerful they began to engage the realm of the spirit suddenly the bible tells us that an angel came the angel was always available peter would have died without that angel coming and yet the angel was available somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels the bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the holy spirit to see that the word of god is never called a lie in your life that's the assignment of angels they are enforcers that means when there is nothing happening from your end they keep loitering around did you know that one of the ways that satan knows god is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit a prayerless believer does not have angelic activities what are they doing when satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities he was once there so he knows uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing they are coming in response when jacob slept in chapter 28 of genesis when he slept the bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending the bible never said they were coming to him he only saw them walking they were going to those who were calling their ministry that was why he said the lord was here these angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me there's no record of any angel bringing anything to him yet they were ascending and descending angels can be in your compound they can be in your vicinity they can be in your office ascending and descending bringing testimonies for those who are praying do not make the mistake of jacob jacob said the lord was in this place i had a chance for my lifting i had a chance for my rising but but according to the law of the will it will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do i want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens angels don't come because you are a christian they come because there is a demand jesus kept speaking he sent prayer to his future after three days i will rise it was not an information after three days i will rise when it was the third day god said you had the prayer an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it let me tell you if jesus kept quiet and never said anything he would have been surprised what will happen after three days the body would not decay but you would not come out either let the redeemed of the lord say so believe what i'm teaching you is why many people do not rise they come under strong influence of angelic activities but they are silent do you not know that this is how the spirit of depression works the assignment of the spirit of depression is to use obstacles to reduce you to a point of silence balaam caused these people and balaam said i tried but there is the shout of the king in the midst of them these are the mysteries that give us power and dominion in this kingdom when you pray there are tools of warfare you don't fight you only activate the laws that make warfare to be a reality so what we call warfare is not you fighting 
what we call warfare is you authorizing the host of heaven angel armies my brothers and my sisters you do not one angel two angels use hailstone is it in your bible when an angel stones you will you be alive look at the bible these things were not parables they actually The angel appeared and told Joshua, Joshua removed his sword. Do you know why he removed his sword? Because God gave him a word. No man will be able to stand against you. So when the angel came, he said, who are you? And the angel had to answer because the word of God was in, on him. If that angel kept quiet, he would have been surprised. It was not the knife. Joshua said, God told me something. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 hold on. It is true. Believe what I'm telling you. Don't play with what God has told you. You can take it to battle. Oh, he told me that in 2021 I am victorious. Oh yes, I believe it. This is not some Pentecostal jargon. It is true. Please sit down. What then is the basis of our confidence if this is not true? Before Satan attacks you, let me tell you what happens. Satan is every other thing but a fool. Before he attacks you, he will research what you know and what you don't know. He will bring it together and build the strategy to attack you. He does not attack randomly. Satan examines. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about agreement? What do you know about prophetic connection? Oh, he doesn't know so much here. What do you know about giving? So he brings it. What strategy can we develop? What are the loopholes in his spiritual life? That becomes the basis for the strategy. Is why Satan is almost accurate when he strikes. Because he does not shadow box. He uses your knowledge and your ignorance. Puts them together and build the strategy for your attack. If you are Satan, will you like me? Verse 5. Oh, number 5. Number 5. We have to finish. Luke chapter 22 from verse 30. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is now the platform to make our requests, our requests, our petitions known. Oh no, let's, I made a mistake, that's, that's point six, let's go to five. It's a strategy to keep your faith alive. The fifth point, please correct it. Prayer is a strategy for living faith. When you want your faith to be alive and living. Luke 22, two verses quickly. Verse 30 and 32. Prop Luke 22. From verse 30 to 32 that he may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel 31 and the Lord said now watch this remember the first time Satan came to Jesus after the temptation in Matthew chapter 4 he came to him it is written it is written Satan left for a season the next time he would come he did not come directly again he came through Peter are we together now and he used Peter's compassion to try to say something that will stop Jesus from going to the cross and Jesus discerning he said mm -mm. Simon Simon behold Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat 32 what was the remedy but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says, and when you are converted, anytime you see people doubting what God has said, suddenly on Sunday you were believing. But on Tuesday, it's like you're saying, look, this thing is like wisdom is profited direct. He said, use this same formula to convert them. Tell them an attack is happening. What suddenly happened that last week you are full of faith, but right now it looks like you are just saying, well, one day go better. 
the wise saying that the devil uses to deceive us when your faith fails your convictions begin to dwindle the classic character of faith is found in Romans chapter 4 when you read it uses Abraham and Sarah as a portrait that he wavered not at his faith through unbelief he counted God faithful when you pray in the spirit it truly keeps your faith alive because how many of you have gone to a place of prayer you went doubting and you kept praying and suddenly it's like a generator all of a sudden courage you know that this is doable you even ask God forgive me for the kind of unbelief I used to come to pray now my heart is alive again and then number six and we'll wrap it up for tonight why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is a platform to make requests and petitions are you saying that for most believers this is the only one we know requests and petitions and yet that is just number six mark 11 and verse 23 and 24 mark 11 23 24 jesus caused the fig tree the next day it was caused and the disciples were surprised and he used the opportunity to teach them something about faith verily verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the law is in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire he says when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them it is in the place of prayer we receive and you can never have what you have not received there are two different things receiving and having is different receiving is spiritual having is the manifestation if you have not received it in the realm of the spirit you will never have it physically and that happens in the place of prayer philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 a platform to table our requests and our petitions the bible says be careful king james says careful but it's not an accurate translation the real translation there the root word there is anxiety be anxious he says for nothing right it says but in everything so there is nothing there is no aspect of your life but prayer cannot be involved in it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here's the instruction let your request be made known don't assume God knows it he says make your request known King James says make your request known and how do you know God has answered that prayer verse 7 hallelujah and the peace of God if you have truly made your request known you can know that your request has reached heaven because suddenly the peace of God in a way that surpasses all understanding will keep the word keep there is garrison it will build a defense around your heart so that all the troubles that come and make your faith to vacillate the peace of God like a strong wall hallelujah where's Dave you sing that your song again just prepare very beautiful powerful song praise the name of the Lord as we prepare to wrap up final scripture for tonight James 4 from verse 2 and 3 James 4 the Bible says in fact let's start from verse 1 to 3 James 4 it says from whence cometh wars and fighting oh dear I wish I had time to walk this Apostle James is a very intelligent Apostle he's tracing the root of many people's problems he's saying from whence comes wars and fighting among you do they not come because of disappointed expectations there are secret desires that you have you want to rise you want to be successful you want to make progress you want your ministry to blossom you want business to move forward and it is human it says that the lost that war in your members verse 2 it says ye lost that means you have even an ungodly desire and affinity and you have not you even go to the extent of killing 
all desiring to have and you cannot obtain you cause quarrel and fight and war yet you have not and the simple reason not knowing that everyone can have a great destiny in christ are you seeing what james is tracing now james is tracing for us the root of bitterness and hatred among family members maybe respectfully speaking among ministers in our society among politicians he's saying if you know what prayer can do you will never envy anybody because everything you ever see there is a way of getting it to another person's testimony is not why you are suffering this is what James is trying to correct. Simply because you do not know how to ask. Look at the side effect of not being equipped with that level of knowledge. And then verse 3, he says, Ye ask and you receive not because you ask and miss. Are you seeing now? So he's not talking about prayerlessness. He's talking about inaccuracy in understanding how to ask and receive. That he may consume it upon your lust. Petitions can be made. Listen, God did not leave us in this kingdom defenseless. This our world is a wicked world. And if God were to leave us to ourselves defenseless, we may not be able to rise. Only God knows the kind of attacks per day, per season, that come upon families, that come upon men of God. Some of you are politicians. If God opens your eyes to see the number of people who try to invoke spirits day and night that you go down, there are families just because God is helping you. You do not know how many people. It's fallacy to believe that everyone is clapping for you. And yet the Bible says, cheer up, find comfort. You can still excel in this world because you are not alone. Heaven has a way of coming into partnership with you to make you invincible and to make your life a sign and a wonder that when all the stakes are down, you are still standing in that family. And they say, by what means? Your grandfather could not stand. And you tell them, I learned that prayer is partnership with heaven. I can draw strength I do not have. I can draw wisdom I do not have. Let me wrap up tonight by teaching you something. The highest proof of humility is prayer prayerlessness is not just sin it is pride when you do not pray it is proof that you are sufficient in yourself it, you, prayerlessness is a statement you are making to god that i have vetted you oh god and i have not found anything in you that i do not have i don't need you when we pray it is proof of humility it is an acknowledgement that we are limited in ourselves and we call for support and we call for help even the military when they go for war they have a system of asking for reinforcement when it looks like the battle is raging then they have a way of calling and the command releases more soldiers I have stood face to face with situations in my life that I knew that only prayer could come in. Many of you have stood face to face with situations, legal situations, political situations, health situations. When you stand before life's challenges and situations, sometimes you may need to drop your intellect. Sometimes you may need to drop studies and call with all humility even jesus at the height of his pain at the cross he did not keep quiet eloi eloi lamak sabatanai father if you now turn your face from me then i know that i'm truly defenseless and the father turned it away because he was looking at man the lord is nigh them that call upon him listen to me you can use the instrument of prayer to bring God down to your life and he stands by you like a mighty, terrible one. You may be weak right now, seated here. Listen to me. Some of you are in ministry and you are asking, Apostle, where will I get church land? Where will I even get the money for it? Some of you are fathers already plunging into depression. Because the pandemic brought so much debt, you are in a situation when you go to pray, you just sit down and cry. I bring you words of comfort. God is not evil to leave you alone. 
it is our pride that keeps driving the help of God away from us my Bible says I will lift up my eyes onto the hills then he asked a question he said from whence cometh my help I don't know about you but my help my assistance ah, I may look weak oh warm Jacob as weak as you are as defenseless as you are but let the jealousy of God be introduced to your life and you will watch your life rise in a way that will first surprise you the recipient of that kindness the hymn writer says how did he put it now he says oh what needless pain we bear he says all because we could not carry everything do you know I thank God for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to work in miracle signs and wonders and sometimes when I have the opportunity to minister to people I am almost tempted to ask them why did you allow it to get this long did you not know that God is that mighty did you not know that God is able to lift why did you allow the issue of your house rent to go so bad why did you allow your health to deteriorate why didn't you run to God the prodigal son kept being proud no I won't go to my father I don't want shame and the more he stayed there doing bold face the more he kept going down until he became like one of the peaks but one day he came to himself he said how many hired servants that's the voice of humility you know many times we want to take credit for everything in our lives Joshua Selman is a doer and God says in this kingdom owners are rebels if you can step back and say Lord you made me father over this family but the bills are killing me I step back and I allow Abba to take his place this political office I am tired of the persecutions that come here and if I leave it to myself one day they will kill me for nothing someone can give you a cup of tea that is full of poison and I know you think you avoid it but you, your memory can fail you one day hunger and test will make you finish drinking it first but you can still find comfort it is not only when you avoid evil that you are free there are times that the fire has no power over you the three Hebrew boys men who the fire had no power it is not only avoidance that brings victory there are times you can walk through the fire Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not he says I am with you I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine and then he says verse 2 when thou passest through water I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you he says when thou walkest through fire you shall not be burnt neither shall the flame kindle upon you business people hear me I know that many of you here are veterans of business I don't mean to insult your pedigree but you have done so much just with human connection why don't you resort with humility to invite divine assistance that in addition to this some of you are professionals in your place of work why don't you employ the hand of God I am very quick to step back and say Lord if you leave me to myself how many things do I know don't leave me at the mercy of my ignorance I am learning slowly but the demands are faster than my rate of learning can you come and stand by me as a mighty terrible God bow your heads in prayer in one minute everyone we're praying we just have five minutes and we're done for tonight's service please be patient don't be distracted everyone all the overflows outside following online while speaking the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you you need to lay aside that burden you are carrying loads Jesus said my my yoke is easy this family burden will kill you for nothing sir this political burden may frustrate you to a point that it may injure you the demands on your business you are probably owing millions and billions in corporate debt. 
it will take more than just finding solutions by the arm of flesh some of you are dealing with loved ones with terminal diseases some of you are in ministry you have exhausted all you know as far as church growth is concerned we were not left defenseless everyone talk to the Lord your maker the Bible says to come boldly before him it's time for us to walk in victory And you're not just praying this for yourself alone you are praying for others too because through you like David Dam sang that God can flow through you to bless others everyone please pray we have just two minutes and we're done Ooh, are you praying quickly Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Someone is praying. Whatever you oh, I am well able. I am well able. I am not the weak believer Lord, under situations and circumstances. He stands by me as a mighty, Whatever terrible one. To change. You can change things through prayer. That family should not remain like that. That financial situation does not have to remain like that. Man of God, your strength is limited. You can outsource intelligence. You can outsource power from a dimension that is not human. Business people. Pray, pray. Let the song inspire you while you pray. The power of prayer. Thy kingdom come. Visitations for my family. New levels in the spirit. Whatever you want to bring, Lord, you can bring through me. Whatever you want to build, Lord, you can build through me. Whoever you want to live. Lord, you can lift through me, whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me, whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Prayer can change your husband, madam. I assure you, prayer can change your wife. Prayer can change your children. You may have taken them to rehab. Why don't you try the power of prayer? Call upon the God of heaven who is able to change we have one more minute someone talk to god about your job someone talk to god about your position talk to god about that which stops you from sleeping the keeper of israel the bible says he does not sleep nor slumber
Listen, please look at me. We're out of time. We have to end for tonight. But as always, we are committed to the global harvest. There are people that the Lord brought here tonight. Many who are following from the US, UK, Asia, the Caribbeans. Whilst under the influence of this word, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Many of you, you are here, seated, the balconies, all of the overflows right down to the basement, outside, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that it's time to make it right with Jesus. Such an honor to be used by Him to save. As we sing, I'd like you to leave your seat very quickly. There are others who are saying, Apostle, standing here, I'm hearing the word of the Lord, it's time for me to be a serious Christian. I'm tired of playing games with my destiny. As I leave this song singing, I want you to run and come. Stand here. All of you who are at the overflows, just you would just run to your projector screens and stand there. Those online, you would connect by faith and pray the prayer. Whoever you want to save, Lord, you can save through me. Keep coming. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to live, Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless. I'm counting five. Run to Jesus. Don't sit back thinking, Apostle, I want to come but I'm embarrassed. I want to come but I'm not sure. I came with my family members. How do I come? Uh, I'm, I'm shy. No, this is not a funeral service. The greatest gift that you can be given is the gift of Jesus. This is not religion. This is not church. This is an experience to start a journey with God that gives you peace with God that your children and your children's children will benefit from don't be so selfish that you sit back and allow those connected to you to suffer because you have refused to give up on your pride are you coming keep coming whoever you want to change Lord you can change through Whoever you want to live, Lord, you can live through me. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Listen to me. The call to Jesus is not some altar call for weak people to come and stand. It takes a lot of courage that you are standing here is proof that you are strong. That you are standing here is proof that you are selfless. Because salvation is not just for you alone. Come to Jesus. Our time is gone, but come to Jesus. We are not playing religion here. Jesus is a big deal. For your life after now. And the excelling of your destiny here and now. God bless you. God bless you. Now look at me. All of you who are standing here, I salute you. Thank you so much for the courage. Some of you are crying. I salute you for the courage to stand. The Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Everybody who means business with God will must at a point in his life answer this call. Refusing this call is pride. Don't run away from an opportunity to come to Jesus. Who else can help you? I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer. Number of you are rededicating your lives. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. It doesn't matter what category. I'd like you to lift your right hand in surrender and total submission to Jesus who is here in our midst. More than Joshua Selman beyond him. The Christ of God is here. And I'd like you to say after me, say it sincerely 
acknowledging that Jesus is here say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart those following online join the prayer tonight I have heard your word I declare that I am unable to help myself so I come to you the author and the finisher of my faith I receive forgiveness of sin I receive eternal life into my spirit I also receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness I declare that from today the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the grave is broken over my life I begin a new journey with the Lord Jesus Christ no condemnation no voice speaks against me I am a new person from today I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted Jesus as always we present to you the ones you died for thank you for giving them the boldness and the courage by the Spirit to publicly make this decision by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you start a new journey with God I commend you all to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Spirit and I pray that step after step he will build you to be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ everything that stands against your liberty in Christ I come against it right now I declare that you walk free of every guilt and every condemnation the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your mind in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now look at me my dear brothers and sisters thank you for making this great decision there's someone waving the placard there one of the counselors please all of you just follow them just a few minutes they'll have your details pray with you and you'll be back to your seat please let's celebrate them everyone don't be tired let's celebrate them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now just two things very quickly I apologize we have to hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching